you launch Avid Media Composer or Symphony, the first thing you'll see is the Select Project dialog. Here you can open an existing project or start a new one. There are three places you can store projects in the Avid. Private, Shared or External. Private projects are stored in your home directory, so they'll only be available under the current user login. Shared projects are available to all user accounts on the current computer, while external projects are those that live outside the private and shared Avid project folders. To access the media you installed for this training, choose Private. You'll see a list of any available projects to the left. By the way, if you want to work with your own footage, be sure to watch the video on loading media first to discover how to import content into Media Composer. We'll start here with a pre-made project. You'll learn how to create a new project in that same video on loading media. Select Getting Started and click OK. Media Composer and Symphony are highly customizable and this allows you to work exactly the way you want to. So the first thing you'll want to do is to create a layout of the various windows in the interface to suit the way you like to work and the dimensions of your monitor. The hub of the project is the project window. Here you'll find a list of all the bins in your project. The word bin is simply a film and video term for a folder that contains your media. In this project we have three bins, one for source video clips, one for audio, and one for sequences. A sequence is an edited timeline of video. This could be anything from a rough cut to the final complete edit for a show. Before we take a look at the bins themselves, let's see how to organize things a little better in the project window. Suppose you wanted to group the music and video clips together into one section called Media. Just click the Fast Menu button. You'll find Fast Menu buttons in Windows throughout the Avid interface. Fast menus provide quick access to some of the more common commands. Choose New Folder. Type a name for the folder and press Enter. Now just drag bins into the folder. You can show or hide the contents of a folder by clicking its disclosure triangle. Now when there are only three bins in your project, creating a folder like this is probably overkill. But once you start building projects with several edits, rough cuts, selects, interviews, promos, you'll quickly find the need to organize your projects with folders. In the project window, you'll see a handful of other tabs besides the bins tab. The settings tab gives you access to your project settings or preferences. In here, you'll find everything from auto save frequency to keyboard shortcut assignments to media capture settings. The format tab contains your project format settings. These are set when you create a project but you can make changes after the fact, and this is also where you can enable stereoscopic features. The Usage and Info tabs provide additional information about the state of your system. This includes current drive capacity. OK, let's take a look at bins now. To open a bin, just double click it in the project window. The bin opens into a new window that you can resize and position as desired. You can open multiple bins at once. Double click another bin and it opens in its own window. To keep your screen from becoming over cluttered though, you can combine bins into a single tabbed view. Just drag the header of one bin into another bin's window and the bins will now be combined and selectable via tabs at the top. This offers perfect flexibility. You can group certain bins together as tabs, but keep complementary bins open so that you have everything within immediate reach. Bins offer several ways to view your media. Selectable via a menu next to the bin fast menu. Frame view is perfect for getting a quick visual of the contents of your clips. You can also move the clips around to create a visual storyboard. Text view gives you a detailed rundown of your clip properties. You can actually choose what information columns are displayed and save display sets made up of different column groups. And Script View is a hybrid of Frame View and Text View with the added ability to quickly add, copy and paste comments about your clips. There are two other important windows we've yet to talk about, but first let's open the Sequence Bin and add it alongside the other tabs. Double click the Rough Cut Sequence icon to load it for editing. 
The Composer window contains your source and record monitors and it's where you'll be reviewing your footage and performing initial edits. And the timeline is where you see edited clips laid out. It's also where you perform more detailed edits to your clips and add effects and transitions. By the way, if you accidentally close your timeline, you can bring it back by selecting it from the Tools menu. By now, you've probably laid out the windows in your project to fit your monitor size and your personal preference. To save this workspace layout for the future, you can update one of the included workspaces or create your own. Since the Source Record Editing workspace is the most common one, let's update that here. Choose Windows, Workspaces, Save Current. Whenever you open a project, Avid remembers the way windows were laid out the last time you had that project open. But if you make a change and you want to recall the layout, just select it from the Workspaces menu. In the next video, we'll start working with a timeline and composer windows.